Welcome back everyone, it's Sarah and in this video I'm going to go through the light phase of photosynthesis. The light phase is composed of two components, you've got two photosystems, you've got photosystem 2, um, also called P680 because the chlorophyll A absorbs light at a wavelength of 680 nanometers. Photosystem 1 or P700, the chlorophyll A molecule absorbs light at a wavelength of 750, or excuse me, 700 nanometers. The whole purpose of the photosystems is to capture light energy and then that light energy is transferred to other molecules to produce energy intermediates. Basically the light is going to excite pigment molecules in both photosystems 1 and 2. Um, photosystem 2, the excited electrons are going to travel to photosystem 1. Water is going to be oxidized to form oxygen gas and hydrogen ions and the energy released in the electron transport chain which transfers the electrons from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 and eventually to NADPH is also used to form to contribute to the hydrogen ion gradient and photosystem 1 its main goal is to produce NADPH another important aspect of the light dependent reactions is the formation of ATP synthesis and this is driven by the flow of hydrogen ions from the thylakoid lumen or the space within the thylakoid into the stroma by the enzyme ATP synthase and the hydrogen gradient is generated by the addition of hydrogen ions in thylakoids by the splitting of water the addition of hydrogen ions by the electron transport chain pumping hydrogen ions into the lumen and the removal of hydrogen ions by the formation of NADPH in the stroma. And it's a removal because you take those hydrogen ions and stick them on to NADP to form NADPH. So a quick overview of what happens. You've got oxygen produced in the thylakoids by the transfer of two electrons from water to the oxidized form of the chlorophyll A, the P680 molecule. NADPH is produced in the stroma from the high energy electrons being transferred transferred from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1. So you've got your NADP plus two electrons plus a hydrogen ion all come together to form NADPH. And then NAD or excuse me, ATP is produced in the stroma from the hydrogen ion gradient. So you have two types of electron flow in the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. You've got non-cyclic, which is where electrons flow from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 and eventually to NADPH. And in non-cyclic flow, equal amounts of ATP and NADPH are produced. But then you've got cyclic phosphorylation. This is when the electrons in photosystem 1 are excited and they release energy which causes the transport of hydrogen ions into the lumen of the thylakoids. This drives the synthesis of ATP. But instead of these electrons being transferred to NADPH, they're returned to photosystem 1 to be recycled to produce more ATP. This normally happens when the cell is low on ATP. So the first complex involved in photosynthesis, the light-dependent reactions, you got your photosystem 2. You've got two components. components. There's a light harvesting complex or antenna complex. This is going to directly absorb photons and transfer energy from resonance or transfer bo double bonds, electrons, all that good kind of stuff. Then you've got the reaction center, which has your P680 molecule. Your P680 molecule is going to be oxidized whenever it gives up an electron. This is really unstable. So whenever the electron from your P680 is transferred to a primary acceptor, your P680 star, which is the oxidized form, is going to want to remove an electron from water to replace the P680 star and reduce it back down to P680. P680 and this is going to yield oxygen and since it only transfers one electron at a time it takes two water molecules to break apart to form the O2 but basically this is what's happened. Photosystem 2 
reminds me of the giant brain from Blaster Master. I think it's the boss in level 1 or level 2 or whatever. So I drew a little picture of Blaster Master here, the giant brain's little electrocution thingies spinning around him and Blaster Master's like WTF, giant brain, oh my god. But anyways, light is going to come in here and it's going to hit this, it's going to excite these pigment molecules. One of these pigment molecules is going to kick off an electron, which is going to be kicked up, picked up by the P680. This P680 is going to absorb a photon at the 680 nanometer wavelength. It's going to excite these electrons and then it's going to kick one of these electrons up to the primary acceptor molecule. Or it's going to go down the electron transport chain all the way to photosystem 1. So it's going to be picked up by the P700 where P700 is going to be re-excited by a photon of wavelength 700 nanometers it's going to kick up this electron to another electron acceptor and it's going to travel down the electron transport chain until it reaches NAD pH and this is what's known as the Z scheme because it's the electron starts at a relatively high energy it's passed down to a lower state of energy and then it's kicked up again to a higher state of energy and ends up at NADPH. So now we have all this ATP and NADPH. So in the next video I'm going to cover the Calvin cycle which uses this ATP and NADPH to make sugars.